Hey YouTube, it's Adrian. Just before we get you to this video, do me a favor and head over to pageantlaunch.com. We are starting the world's first dedicated pageant review site, and I would love for you to join our launch team. All you need to do is put in your email address. It's completely free. We are looking to make a pageant industry that is safe, transparent, and fair. I know it's like that most of the time, but over the last year, it's become very evident that it's not like that all of the time. So head over to pageantlaunch.com, put in your email address, and let's get you to this. Hey everyone, it's Adrian from The Pageant Project and I've got Natalie Pavlek with me. Natalie, welcome back. Hi. Thank did you I so pronounce much your surname correctly me. this time? Yes, you did. You did really, really well. People always struggle to pronounce it and spell it, so um, you did great. Well, I've had a couple of months practice, haven't I? Pavlek, Pavlek. Pavlek, <laughs> yes. Look, most people go Paulek or something like that, so no, you did brilliant. Well, it's... <laughs> Remind me, it's got Polish. It's a Polish name, isn't it? Yes, or Polish my, background? my husband's grandparents came to the UK after the Second World War. Um, so they were Polish. Um, and then they had their son, my uh, husband's dad. And yes. Right. Okay. Uh, now, you were on a podcast with us before. Uh, it's a little bit the other way around. So it's the first time that we've done this. It just went so the podcast went so well. I decided that we should interview. Oh. And obviously, you've, your Mrs. Chester Galaxy UK Galaxy is coming up in. I'm looking at my calendar. Is it six weeks? Maybe it is six weeks this weekend. So th this this six weeks today, will the Miss competition will be on, and the Mrs. competition will have happened. So that will be that. That's the Friday. That's Friday the thirteenth. Right. The thirteenth. Yeah, that's a really, really good date to be holding your competition oh, on. Oh, do you know what? I don't mind. Like, Friday the 13th, I've always kind of thought, oh, it's all right. Make it, decide that it's lucky. Yeah, well, I, I, I think the same way. I'm not terribly superstitious, so you might as well look at it as a lucky yeah. number. But f fill us in. So you've got about six weeks to go. Um, I've seen you've been manic on social media, doing a lot of posts, and obviously yeah. you've got a very interesting sort of background in terms of your career. So... Yeah. Fill us out with um, fill us in with how everything's been going in the lead up. It's really good. It's been really great. So I did Galaxy last year, and I entered towards the end of January. So I had um, a really short period of time between entering and the final, and it was the first time I'd done Galaxy. So I didn't really totally understand all about the appearance side and about the mm -hmm. community side and about um, how you know so many of the girls become really great friends. And so I I went to the final then sort of discovered this whole world, had an amazing time at the final and just thought, I want to do that again and I want to do it for a whole year and I want to give my everything yeah. and I want to get the whole experience. So I entered again straight away and then um, I got my sash um, towards the end of May, the start of June. And then I just thought, right, I've got 10 months now to just have the best year to just do everything mm. that I can with the title, to make as many friends, to have as many experiences. And I've just been working really, really hard for the last um, nine months in the run up to, to the pageant. And now it's kind of less than six weeks to go and it just feels like it's just flown yeah. by i just i just can't believe it but i feel really prepared i'm just i'm really in the final preparation stages so um too much right. information but today i ordered um what we would call like boob tape off the internet so to keep your right. dress stuck down to you so i know exactly what it is actually <laughs> I think there's another word for it. I'm going to say boob tape because that sounds like the most polite. I I'm... think it's, I think it's, my friend calls it Hollywood tape. Nice. That's even better. Yeah. So that's kind of like the final sort of details of preparation I'm in now. Right. So overall then the feeling sounds like you are prepared and excited rather than nervous. Yeah, I'm really, really excited. I mean, I think I'm lucky because of my job. I don't get nervous being on stage or being interviewed. I, um, I, I, I look forward to it. I, I can't wait to get on the stage. I can't wait to get in the interview. Um, the only thing that is causing me a slight bit of anxiety um, is the fact that I've not started my appearance forms yet. And um, I don't know if you know about appearance forms. 
I've heard of these mythical forms a little bit, yes. <laughs> so you do a different, you do one form for every appearance that you've done. And then I, oh I, was, I was at an event last week and I was speaking to Leah, who's Miss Purely Galaxy. I don't know if I pronounced that mm -hmm. right. And she said, oh, I've been doing mine as I went along. And I thought, oh my goodness, you're a genius. I haven't even started mine <laughs> that would yet. would probably be a better idea, yeah. A much better idea. So I was working out the other day. If it takes about 10 minutes to do one form, I've got about 12 hours worth of forms to fill in so Ugh. yes that's the only thing so I, I need to start making a dent on them <laughs> and so how many appearances dare i ask have you racked up so far i'm i'm somewhere in between 50 and 60 at the minute so my my aim when i signed up was that i wanted to commit to doing at least one appearance a week so that i could mm. kind of stay dedicated and and get as much experience as i you know and, and, and as i could so i committed to doing at least yeah. one a week and i've sort of done that and i've done more than that and i've got more coming up as well so yeah somewhere between sort of 50 and 60. wow you, you guys are yeah. crazy with the number of appearances you do i don't understand how you have a chance to do anything else in your life i mean because you you've got mm. your career as well on top of this so you mentioned that you're mm. looking forward to interview just quickly mention if people watching this don't know about your background give them an idea as to what you do for your day job so I have two I have two sort of careers that kind of are totally different, but they work really nice. So my kind of um, normal day job is I work for a charity in the UK called Blue Cross, and they are an animal rescue and veterinary charity. So that's my nine to five, Monday to Friday. And then the kind of exciting, um, not that working for an animal charity isn't exciting, it very is. Sure. Um, but the kind of other side is I, I work as a presenter and I work for Manchester City and I work for, I do do some work on BBC Radio Manchester and I do freelance work mm -hmm. for um, loads of other stations and yeah basically yeah. sort of football so I talk football yeah and now Daniel mentioned a couple of weeks ago on a podcast because I always ask them what have you got coming up over the next week and she mentioned that you got her tickets to see a football match where I believe it was your side against yeah. her side yes. but in your home city yeah so how did that match go? It's next weekend, but we... Oh, it's next yes, weekend. So we had a game about that ended about 90 minutes ago and we got beat today. So I'm doing well to oh, still I'm be sorry. smiling. It's, you know, hey, it happens. <laughs> but next weekend, yeah, Danielle's coming up for the pageant land ball. And then the next day, um, she's going to come to the game with me. And I am going to try and persuade her to come on stage and have a little interview with me and talk pageants or we'll get some, we'll do something. Ooh. Yeah. I think Daniel's yeah Daniel was, is watching so um she'll be excited to hear that yeah. um, and I, I, guys <laughs> on the Facebook I just sorry I haven't looked at the Facebook comments yet there's a load of them I'll, I'll come back to them soon um, but can you just tell explain to me as an Aussie how crushing is it when your football team loses um it's yes it's it's really <laughs> bad. It's, there's, like different, there's, there's like different levels of bad. So basically, my team right. won the league last year and we won the league the year All before right. that. Okay. But this year, right. there's another team, Liverpool, who you've probably heard of, who are 22 yeah. points ahead of us or something crazy. So this it was now at this point, I'm like, oh, well, we got beat. We're not going to win the league. Like, So it, it's, mm. it's bad, but it's like it's not horrendous. But we are still in... Um, the Champions League. So if we get beat in the Champions League, then that's going to be like that. Like, don't talk to me for a few days. Like, it's probably best for right. me to just like lock myself in a cupboard for for while I calm down. <laughs> Is it so? Has the team? I have no idea, right? But has a team bombed this year? Did they lose a star player? Was there something mm. else going on? In your opinion, as a professional. What has gone wrong with your team? We did lose a star player. We lost a player called Amaric Laporte, who was our central defender, um, and he got right. injured right at the start of the season. And we've been playing with a really makeshift defence for a large part of the season. Um, I also think, because we won the league last year, and we won the league the year before that, broke loads mm. of records. I just think, you know, to do it three years on a trot is really difficult. Um, yeah. But, hey, it's all, you know, happens. Take it on the chin. <laughs> I, I think you look like you're resigned to your fate <laughs> is what it looks like right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying not to be a sore loser, which I very much have been in the past when it comes to football. <laughs> right. Okay. Let me just uh, head on over to the Facebook comments briefly. So as I mentioned, Jessica Park Barclay has left you a question. Uh, she has asked, what has been 
uh, your favorite appearance so far? Oh, that's a great question. Um, oh, do, I've had some amazing ones. Do you know the ones that stick out in my mind? I've done um, a couple of local appearances. So I got invited to a local Contact the Elderly Tea Party. And it was just, um, it happens every month. It's an amazing charity that's national and it's run by local volunteers. And they invited me to go along mm. to the local Chester branch. And it was, there was only a handful of, of, of elderly women there, but they were genuinely so excited to see my sash and to talk about the pageant. Um, and I also felt that I did, I volunteered at my local community centres um, annual fashion show and I was in the fashion mm. show and I was walking and then on the last one and, and the crowd is was elderly women nobody under the age of 60 sure. and I walked out in my sash and they went oh, oh and they were they were so excited and it was so lovely to feel that excitement around because you are a pageant queen because you are a title holder because you have a sash these women mm. were genuinely excited that I was there um so they they both they were both wonderful. Sounds amazing. Uh, Jessica also asked, "What is your morning routine?" Um, oh, that's a good one, Jessica. And you 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 will understand me because I have a, I have a two year old and I know Jess does as well. So um, mm. my routine is get up before my two year old. So um, <laughs> that's probably about half past. That six. can be challenging. <laughs> yes, right. Try, okay. and, try and work out when he's going to wake up, and he generally wakes up about seven. So get up at half past six. Get myself washed dressed get my skincare done because like i i think i've mentioned it before i'm a massive skincare freak i love skincare to so get my skincare done come downstairs get his milk ready get my morning shake ready and then be ready for him waking up um and then i have the morning with about half an hour with him and then i get him to nursery by about quarter to eight um and then right. i get to the gym and i do a session in the gym before i start work at nine o'clock so um, yeah, my mornings are go, 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 but it's the, the only time I can get to the gym is before work. And that means getting my son to nursery before I can get there. Sure. That sounds very planned out. That sounds like you've done yes. that a few times. Yes. That is our Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday routine. And then on a Thursday, Friday, my son goes to my mother-in-law. So it's slightly different. But yeah. Right. Yes. Okay. yes. Yes. Uh, now, now Danielle has asked, am I saving you a spot net? But I can't remember what that's about. I it, maybe it's the ball. Or it can't be about the football game. Is it about the ball? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's about. Is it about the football game? I'm not sure. But yeah, send oh, me a spot. Wh whatever it is, I'll have a spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whatever you're doing, just send me a spot. Daniel, type the question in again. Sorry, we, we got a bit delayed. Um, so I'm just going through. I'm trying to find you a question because very often what happens with these people say they love you, they love you, they love you, but there's not actually a question. You've got a lot of messages of support here. I'll oh, let you go through them you. afterwards. I, it's uh, always scary when you do this sort of thing. You think nobody's going to tune in. <laughs> no, you, you've got people tuned in. Um, oh, you've got Danielle, you've got Chloe Rose, you've got Aww. Jessica Barkley, you've got Beverly, Mary Roberts. So you've got a lot of people tuned Thanks, in. Guys. Um, so. Guys, if you have any actual questions, um, put them in the comments below. Danielle's now being a pain in the backside, saying, I'm being cryptic, mwa-ha-ha-ha-ha. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Thanks, Danielle. Um, so I want to back up to the to the um, the broadcasting with yeah. the with the radio. How did, I, I think I may have asked you this, but how did that come about? Yeah, that's, that's a really great question. So I, um, back in, back way, way time ago, so um, in April, I'll be 37, when I was in university. <laughs> it's not 37, 40 years than you 20, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I'm, yeah, definitely. Um, but when I was in university, so I was 21, um, I won a modelling competition in the UK. Now, did you, I, you guys had FHM magazine didn't you? It's, it's, yes, yeah, it we still have it. Yeah. Oh, you do. Oh, it doesn't exist in this country anymore, but it was the sort of right. the biggest selling magazine in the world at the time. And I won a modeling mm. competition um, that they were running called the FHM High Street Honeys. And it was the biggest right. modeling competition in the country. And I was on the cover of FHM. And I went on to have. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, I, many many levels. Um, and I went. I on need to, to find this cover. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's on my it's on my Instagram. Yeah, yeah. I'm oh, is it? Yeah, I'm really proud of it still. Yeah, you can what, find um, it. What was the month? What was the month and the year? Do you remember? Uh, so yeah, so it was March two thousand and five. 
Wow. Yeah, so wow. a long time ago, but I reposted it last year, I think. Every now and again, I'm like, hey, I did this. <laughs> That's um, amazing. Yeah, it was brilliant. And I went on to have a modeling career that was about eight, eight years long. And I was on, I did all the men's magazines because kind of, mm-hmm. you know, in the, in the 2000s, men mag- men's magazines ruled. Like we had, we had loads of men's magazines in this country and I had a really great career. Yeah. And then I went on to have a sort of commercial modeling career and, um, I did, I modeled um, the Manchester City kits a few times. And so I, so I met them and they, and then literally one day I I gave up modeling um, and I got myself a nice normal job and I was sat at my desk one day and I got an email from Manchester City basically saying, Mm -hmm. we're looking to add a female presenter to our match day coverage. Are you interested? And I can still exactly remember where I was when I got that email and I was like, yes, like, this is like a dream job for me. Um, mm. And then, so I've been at Manchester City for 10 years now. And from that, just the experience that I gained from working at Manchester City, interviewing the players and celebrities, um, I just started getting asked to do other things. Um, and then four or five years ago, I started doing a local Manchester station called Excess Manchester, and I was doing their, their sports mm-hmm. show. Um, and then in the summer just gone, I got a call from BBC Radio Manchester, which again, absolute and utter dream come true because everybody from the Manchester area listens to the football coverage on that station. So um, right. they contacted me and basically I cover their football program when the main presenter is off. Um, so they have a great, yeah. a great presenter called Kyle. He's brilliant. And, but when he's off doing other jobs or can't make it, he's on holiday, I cover for him. So um, I'm doing the radio show Wednesday and Friday of next week. Um, and yeah, so it's basically just experience. And then you get mm. asked to do different things and you do well in that. And then you get asked to do different things. So it just kind of spirals. Sure. Did you have formal training or any sort of formal training to do the broadcasting or just voice work? So not yes and no, not really. So I did a film degree at university, right. but it was an absolute and utter waste of time. I wouldn't agree. I wouldn't recommend anybody to, to go to university and do a film degree. Uh, I think I, okay. got two, I got a two one, um, which is like this second, like down in, in this country, a first and then a two right. one. Um, right. And from that, when I started modeling, I FHM knew that I liked presenting and I used to do presenting for FHM. So I did some red carpet stuff. I used to interview celebrities. So I, I was picking oh, wow, up right. interviewing work just because people knew I was interested in it. Um, yeah. I went on a couple of presenting training courses, but generally just like one day things. Um mm. But I just took every, every, my biggest tip for anybody looking to get into presenting would be just to take every opportunity that comes your way. Make sure you work really hard in that opportunity. Make sure that you're really nice to everybody. You're really professional to everybody. Because a lot of Mm. the time when people are thinking about who they're going to hire, they want to hire somebody they like and that that they know is not going to cause problems and that it's going to turn up on time and have done their revision. And so, yeah, I just took every opportunity I could and, yeah, it yeah. just spiraled, yeah. What's your biggest challenge been with that career? I mean, it sounds like a career mm. that's very exciting, but I'm sure there must be some challenges associated with it as well. Well, it was definitely being a woman. So um, mm. I have been a Manchester City fan. I've had a season ticket for 21 years, so I've grown up in football, been going to football for my whole life. My dad is a huge football fan. But 10 years ago, when I started working for Manchester City, there really wasn't many women working in football. So you wouldn't regularly see women's faces associated with either playing football or football coverage. Um, And at the start, it was definitely the biggest challenge was proving to people that I deserve to be there because of my knowledge and because of my skills and not I wasn't just there because I was a woman. Mm and I just, I just found that to do that, you had to work harder than your male counterparts. You had to be better than them. You had to, um, I say, just, just work harder, never mess up, take every opportunity. And um, it took a few years. And then, thankfully, the whole football community world of sport has changed in this country. And now there mm. is an incredible standard of women's football, an incredible standard of female broadcasters and women in football is a norm now. And it, and it, it wasn't that yeah. way 10 years ago. 
Yeah, I definitely remember when it wasn't the norm and in Australia it's definitely taken off as well. Oh, it's good. certainly not on the level with the men's game, but, you know, it's catching up quickly and it's really great to see that a lot of girls can get into it as well and not just definitely. spectate, they can actually go and play the sport. Definitely. Uh, now, Chloe has asked, how do you style your hair? It always looks amazing. Oh, Chloe, thank you so much. <laughs> um, well, I've just just literally recently had some, um, like, you know, tips, tips of the of the trades and um, some a weave put in to make it a bit thicker. Um, right. So I now have two rows of weave, which I, I've got in purpose purposely for the competition coming up sure. um, and that just makes it a bit thicker and then I actually for this don't really have to do anything with it because it's got the thickness now because of the weave so a, we a right. weave <laughs> a weave okay is that similar to extensions I haven't heard of a weave before yeah yeah it is it's, it's just it's a form of extensions okay all right yeah. so there you go Chloe yeah. um <laughs> it, it just looks like that because of the weave but it looks yes, amazing yes, it's uh, the weave. <laughs> now that natalie let's um i normally probably ask this as the first question but can you give us an idea as to why you entered pageantry in the first place yeah so i love pageantry i've always loved pageantry um some of my earliest memories i have is me watching miss world and being mm. a little girl and desperately trying to stay awake to see who won and not managing it and the next day trying to desperately find out who won and um i just always loved pageants and when i was nine, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, 18 19 20 i mm -hmm. did a few pageants i did miss england twice and i did miss great britain once and right. I um, always got through to the final cut, so um, the top mm -hmm. seven or the top five, but didn't win, but still loved pageantry. Um, then I won the modeling competition and went on yeah. to, to have the modeling career and just kind of thought, well, that, I had it, that was that. I still love it, but that, that was that. Because mm -hmm. at that time, there wasn't really, I didn't really know of any Mrs. competitions or any Ms. competitions. Yeah, sure. Um, and then I was, um, it was, I, I want to say seven years ago now, um, I was working for a charity called the Christie Charity in Manchester. Mm -hmm. And the Christie is the nominated charity of Galaxy. Um, of course. And I met Holly and I went along to the final and I watched and I worked with some of the girls that were raising money. And I, at, the t at that time, there wasn't an MS, but there was a Mrs. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, my God, when I get married, I am entering another pageant. I love pageants. I can't wait to get married. And I actually took my then boyfriend, and we'd been together yeah. for a month. We'd been together one month, and I took him to this pageant. And I was like, when was I brave. get married, I know, when I get married, I'm going to enter this pageant. And I think he was just like, what? But thankfully, I mean, that it didn't put him off. We are married. <laughs> And I, I was going to say, you've been with someone for a month. You take them to a pageant and say, when I'm married, I'm going to... Wow, that's that's putting the pressure on. But I think at the start, when I was like, would you like to come and watch a pageant with me? There's going to be like 100 girls in bikinis and evening gowns, and you could just watch them, and I'm happy for you to watch them. I think he was like, wow, she's a keeper. <laughs> <laughs> that... <laughs> Yeah, I, you can always spot the boyfriends and the partners at, at the pageant. So they're always the ones that look a little out of place and sometimes a little, had a bit too much to drink, I think. My husband was so drunk at Galaxy last year. He had a brilliant time. He loved it and he was just drunk. Does he remember any of it? Um, yeah, him and his best friend had a lovely time. They met loads of people. They met loads because the, the the pageant community is generally really lovely. And he met loads of people mm. on the table he was sat on, and made loads of friends. And is still connected to these people he made on like Instagram and Twitter. And um, yeah, he had a great time. I don't know if he remembers too much about what I did on stage, but he had a great time. Oh, well, as long as he enjoyed himself, I guess, I guess that's all that matters. Um, can you give us an idea as to what, obviously you, you've had a few different careers and you had the pageantry and modeling and they're always sort of intertwined, but overall, what would you say that you've taken from pageantry over the years? How have you grown? What, have, what lessons have you learnt, et cetera? So pageantry for me has um, honestly been incredible. So um, there's so many things I've taken from pageantry. First of all, I'd say is the kind of, um, you know, I'm as I say, I'm 36, I'm 37 at the start of April. I have a two-year-old, I'm married. And it, mm. pageantry gives you the sense that 
that is that doesn't mean it's the end of your dreams like you can yep. chase, chase your dreams regardless of what age you are and regardless yeah. of you know your marital status if you've got children you know especially with galaxy everybody is welcome and um you'll you'll see when you come you'll see women of all ages all sizes all ethnicities mm. all everything on that stage and yeah pageantry's definitely given me the feeling that i don't need to i can still follow my the dreams that i had when i was a little girl watching this world i can still have those type of dreams now um mm. it's also given me a brilliant social life in the last year so I, I again i you know after having a baby and everything becomes really concentrated on your child and um, of course. You, you kind of lose yourself a little bit because you become mum and pageantry mm. has reminded me as well that I am a mum and, you know, my, my son is the greatest thing that ever happened to me, but I'm still a woman and I still have my dreams and it's still okay yeah. to put on a gorgeous dress and to do my hair and makeup and to, it's still okay to have time just for me because, you know, when I'm feeling my best, I'm a better mum for my son as well. So yeah, of course. it's been brilliant. Yeah, I think yeah. it's very important for anyone to, to maintain some sort of social life. Otherwise, it can get very, very lonely, no matter how much, obviously, you love your child, but it, it can be difficult, yeah. that adjustment, suddenly having to stay at home all the time. Definitely. Uh, now, Chloe has said that she's thinking of getting one. I, I believe by that she must mean a weave. So there you go. Yes, mine is an LA weave, Chloe, by the way. There's different types of weave. This okay. is an LA weave. Um, that's my preferred. <laughs> okay. Uh, we've got hair tips coming left, <laughs> yeah. right, and centre. Danielle has said pizza afterwards. I, I don't know. After yeah. Danielle, you're being very cryptic today. Yeah. You're being very. You need to be a bit more descriptive. I don't know, maybe it's pizza after the game, pizza after I'm Galaxy, or just pizza, pizza after this interview. Yes. I don't know. Pizza after anything sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Chloe has asked, "What is your top tip for Galaxy?" Do your appearance forms as you go along <laughs> and don't wait until six weeks before to start doing them. <laughs> what, are, you, are you really going to sit down for 12 hours? To, uh, can you even remember all the appearances you've done and all the details that you need? Well, thankfully, I've put every appearance or pretty much every appearance on my Facebook page with pictures and a write-up. Right. I'm going to try and do two or three a day every day, except I'm going to start that tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, and, and try and get that's like that diet i'm gonna start my diet tomorrow and then tomorrow oh, no. never comes because tomorrow is today i said on friday i was gonna start but i'm gonna start tomorrow um but then i'd say my other tip for galaxy is just to enjoy the whole experience don't don't just think galaxy is one night when you're on stage to get the best mm. out of it enjoy the whole one up to it sure perfect Okay, uh, I just catch up on the Facebook comments. Chloe has said, "Glad I've done mine as I've gone along." Then. Oh, yeah, Chloe. Chloe. <laughs> Chloe, we we I covered this with Chloe when I interviewed her. She's she's very organised, especially for someone that age, and she's very um very clever about how she approaches um, creating events and um, also her sponsors as well. So, um, Natalie, just before we head to the final 10 questions, is there anyone that you want to give a shout out to just for supporting you? pageantry, modeling, life in general? Yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, I have a sponsor as well. Um, I'm really lucky that I've got a sponsor this year. They're a skincare company or skincare clinic in Chester called DD mm -hmm. Clinical. And they've been amazing. I've been going in every month for facial treatments, different um, different facials, different... I'm going in on Tuesday to have a, um, a gentle peel done and because mm -hmm. I love skincare. They've been amazing. Um, right. And then, do you know what? I just say all of the friends that I've made, I'm really lucky that I have made some genuine friends friends over mm. um this the course of pageantry um and yeah that's been a real a real you know highlight for me and i guess as well i should probably say thanks to my husband because you know probably <laughs> he, um, <laughs> he, he he goes to a lot of things he 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 has to remain quite uh, flexible because i'm like oh i'm going to this thing i'm going to this thing and um so yeah you know to him obviously to him as well I mean, you dragged them along to see girls in bikinis. I think he might owe you some thanks as well. Let's be uh, honest yes, about yes, it. Yes, and then he got to bring his that's, best friend as well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's a pretty cool partner, if I do say so myself. <laughs> yeah. um, just out of curiosity, your your football team, it's Manchester City, is it? That's right, that's the one. Yeah, because yeah. there are two Manchesters. Mm. Uh, are there any famous football chants for your team? 
I'm yes. just curious. So, well, we have this song called Blue Moon, um, and it's like a song from like the 60s, but um, we have now taken it and it's our own. It's like, yeah, Blue Moon, you saw me standing alone, and we, yeah, we, that's our passion song. That's our, yeah, number one. Blue Blue Moon, you saw yeah. us standing alone. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. is it like without a bluesy a song? In my heart without a love of my own. I said Blue Moon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> who knows where football chants come from? <laughs> okay, but but there, are there actually any just like chants, like ones when you need like one or two seconds and you got to g up your team? Are there any quick chants apart from the song? I mean, I, just, I can't know that I can think of. We're absolutely loads, but they all tend to be like songs or famous songs oh, right, that have okay. adapted the words so that they fit with City. Okay, so now I understand why everyone needs to be drunk to see mm. the football because you need to sing, and most people need to be drunk to sing. So yeah, but that it's makes okay. a lot of sing sense. at the top of your voice. It doesn't matter because everybody else is. Nobody can really hear you, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, let me just go back to the Facebook questions one more time. Okay, so Chloe has asked, what are you most looking forward to? I am, um, I'm really looking forward to to the interview. Um, I mm -hmm. just, I'm really looking forward to telling the judges um, everything that I've done and how hard I've worked and talk about my appearances and my charity work. Um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing some of the girls that I met last year as well, because there's, right. a, there's a few, there's Dion um, and Chloe who were in it last year in my category who are back. Um, and then some of the contestants that win the Miz are also back as well. So I'm looking forward to seeing them as well. Sure. Uh, Danielle has said Blue Moon was from the Mooney scene from Greece. Oh, nice. Okay. okay. I, I didn't know there. Dan Danielle coming, uh, coming in hot with all the random trivia and the very cryptic comments. <laughs> <laughs> Danielle, you're a bit in a bit of a strange <laughs> mood tonight. Uh, Danielle just finished dry January and... Oh. Um, you know, it's just coming to February. So I think, um, Daniel, are you making up for lost time? <laughs> yeah, yeah, had a good weekend. <laughs> okay, sounds like it. All right, let's go through the final 10 questions. Have you heard of the final 10 questions before? Most people have by this yes, stage. Yes, yes. Okay, all right. Now it's your chance. Here we go. Oh. Number one, what is your favorite word? Love. That's a good one to pick. What about number two, what is your least favorite word? United. <laughs> it, had, it had to be football related, but I, I should have said something like meaningful, like hate, but um, United is the first word that came to mind. I, I, I prefer the, the United answer yeah. to, the, to the hate. That, yeah. That's more of an original. Uh, okay. Question three. In life, what gets you excited or what turns you on? Um, my foot. Oh God, this is. It's honestly, it's going to be a pattern in this. My football team gets me excited when they're playing well and probably turn me on. Um, yeah, definitely my football team. Okay, so what turns you off when they don't play well? Yeah, when they don't play well, or Manchester United, yeah, or Liverpool being <laughs> twenty-two points ahead of us. That yeah, I don't like that. So, how do you feel when you bump into someone who is a Manchester United fan? Do, 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 what, um, what sort of reaction do you have? I have limited contact with them. <laughs> <laughs> God, okay. I have a few friends. I have a few good friends who are Manchester United fans and Liverpool fans. Um, and right. they are wonderful, obviously. But generally, generally in life, I tend to keep myself apart from them. Okay, so so as come, someone coming from Sydney, Australia, do you have any advice as to what UK football team I should support? I mean, you should you should definitely support Manchester City. Um, we okay. have Melbourne Melbourne City, um, yeah, yeah, to yeah. Our, our sister club. So you could go and watch mm -hmm. them, and it would still be like you are part of the family. Okay, so who is Manchester City's biggest rival then? <gasps> Uh, because they're from the same city, it's, it would either be Manchester United or our actual nearest, the team that is challenging us the most is Liverpool. Mm. Okay. Because you know yeah. that Melbourne and Sydney basically are rivals as well. Oh, really? So if, yeah, if Man, if Man City is with Melbourne City, that probably means by definition I should be going with the biggest rival because otherwise I've done it backwards. No, no. No, no. <laughs> well, I, I did ask. I just came back from Melbourne. I, I love Melbourne, but I live in Sydney. So yeah. anyway, question five. What sound or noise do you love? Oh, my son, when he's laughing, he's just, his little laugh is just, it makes you laugh as well. 
And question six, what sound or noise do you hate? Oh, my son crying. <laughs> my son crying or screaming because it'll, it's genuine, generally for something like he's two. It's, it's for something silly. So um, he mm. cries every night when, when, he, when he's made to brush his teeth. Like, and you're just like, oh, it's every night. Come on. <laughs> Why does he cry when he has to brush his teeth? He does not want to brush his teeth. It is a constant fight with oh. a two-year-old to persuade him to brush his teeth or to at least open his mouth so I can brush his teeth. <laughs> It'll be ironic if he ends up being a dentist. I know, yeah, it will be. <laughs> Question seven. If you could have any one superpower, what would you pick and why? Oh, a superpower. Oh, um to travel anywhere at the click of a finger, to just be somewhere else. To just... Oh, teleporting or transporting. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Imagine not having to spend hours on the motorway or stand on the train station because your train's been cancelled or, you know, just like, oh, Adrian, do you want to go out for dinner this evening? And I'm in Sydney. Like, that'd be amazing. You guys do sound like you have really horrible traffic. This has kind of been on my mind because oh. when I went to Melbourne, I was amazed to find that Melbourne traffic seems to be worse than Sydney. So for you guys, spending hours or years of your life on the motorway seems to be just a way of life. Yeah, like pu public transport and, and uh, transport in general in this country is, is, gen is genuinely dire. And considering that we're such mm. a small country in comparison to what you would have to travel, mm. um, so it can take me from where I live in North Wales to get to Manchester. If there is no traffic, it takes an hour. Right. That, if you did that every day, you'd probably get that once. And then on the other days, right. there'd be an accident or there'd be something and it can take you two hours or two and a half hours. Oh, it's, wow. Yes. It's, and then to get a train from Chester to Manchester is an hour and a half. Mm. Like, it's, right. yeah, it's rubbish. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that, I do not like the idea of sitting in traffic. Question eight. If you could try any occupation other than your own, what would you most like to attempt? Oh, well, my husband is a doctor and I um, have so much admiration for him and for all, all medical professionals. And the times when he comes home saying basically that he saved somebody's life that day is mm. just mind blowing. So I think to, to ever be able to say that you did that would just be really special. Yeah, that, that's, that's amazing. Um, what about what occupation other than your own would you definitely not like to attempt? Um, oh, oh gosh, probably something, some sort of like train driver or lorry driver <laughs> or something to do with the, just when, you're, when your job is our awful transport, that would be horrendous. That just sounds hateful. It would make you not <laughs> want to wake up in the morning. Final question. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Oh, um, you did good. You did good, girl. That would be fine for me. No. I was sure that answer would have something to do with football in it. Yeah. Manchester City will win the league. <laughs> I think you'd be fairly happy if you got up to heaven and you find out that God was a Man Manchester City fan, wouldn't you? I think we have had some serious, terrible years um, in our history. There's no way that God is a city fan. <laughs> <laughs> so he hates your hates your team. Yes. Uh, okay. So final question. We've got one more question from Beverly Mary Roberts. Um, how will you promote Galaxy? Well, this is going a step ahead, but how will you promote Galaxy International if you were to win Galaxy UK? Yeah, so that's a great question. And I, I think I would, I think I have a kind of unique platform um, because of the broadcasting and football work that I do. So, um, you know, my generally my social media following and people that know me um, publicly do know me because of football. And so I think mm -hmm. I have a really unique platform to promote pageantry as a whole and also the Galaxy Definitely. system. Um, so yeah. I would just use that and continue to use all the opportunities I get to talk about the galaxy system and pageantry and the amazing positives that pageantry brings you. And it's, it's what I'm calling changing pageant perception. It's my platform for, mm. for the pageant. And I would, I would just um, keep doing that and keep promoting the amazing positives that pageantry can bring to your life.
Yeah, I mean, you you do have now that I think about it, an amazing platform to to promote pageantry, given what you do. So, yep, that's yeah. that'll be great. Uh, Danielle has said it's okay, Adrian. You can be a hammer with me. Is that East Ham, West Ham? West Ham. So Danielle supports West Ham, and they call themselves the Hammers. And is that Hammer yeah. Smith? No, I think it's just because it's West Ham. I think. I mean, Danielle will probably tell us, but oh. I don't think they're close to each other. Oh, okay. So the place name is West Ham. Do you know what? I think it's, I think it's, Danielle, is it East Ham, but they're called West Ham? Like, I feel like that's true. <laughs> but anyway, Adrian, you don't, you don't want to support <laughs> um, them because they, they might get relegated this year. So you don't want to support them. <laughs> well, I do have a, ha I do have a habit of supporting the underdog. Uh, no, I don't want to support someone. Way below that. <laughs> Or, or I don't want to support someone who's terrible and never wins either. Like, I want to support someone who has a chance but isn't the favourite. Okay. So if you're saying they're going to be relegated, I don't know. I, I don't yeah. want that. But, Sorry, Danielle. Uh, Danielle says, I live in East Ham. West Ham is next door, my closest team. Right. Okay. There we go. All right. Now, now yeah. I just want to eat ham. I want a ham and cheese toasty. <laughs> okay. Well, Danielle, thank you for all the comments and the questions. And Natalie, thank you so much for your time. Um, and I'll be seeing you in the UK. We are. We're really looking forward to meeting you. And well done. Thank you for everything you do. It's great to have something like this that promotes pageantry. Thank you. It's, it's going to be quite bizarre. I can tell you walking into Galaxy UK for the first time and seeing so many people that I've interviewed or messaged or both and seeing them in mm -hmm. real life and be like, wow, you actually exist. <laughs> it probably be the same yeah, the other way yeah. around. Everyone's going to think they know you as well because they've watched you. Like they're going to they're yeah. Gonna, yeah, be like, hi. <laughs> I, I, think the first, uh, I think the first comment I'm going to get from a lot of people is, wow, you're so tall. Or wow, you actually are tall. Oh, wait, so, how tall are you? I'm six foot one. Oh wow! Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. It, it's a useful height in pageantry, so that even when the girls are in their heels, you tend to at least be even level. Yes. I don't. I don't want to be short because I don't <laughs> like people being up there when I'm taking the photos. So it's a oh, very. I'm, I'm, I'm only five seven, so you'll you, we, you'll be fine with me. Five seven actually seems to be on the tall end. I've been talking to a lot of people who are shorter than that. So everybody, to be everybody around five, is welcome. Six. Yes. Everybody is welcome. Okay. All right, perfect. Well, Natalie, I'll keep you on the line for a sec. I'm going to thank everyone for watching, and we will speak to you again soon. Thank you. Hey, guys, it's Adrian again. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and remember to head over to pageantlaunch.com and join the launch team for our pageant review site. All you need to do is put in your email address. Thanks, and uh, speak to you next time.